The power of a computer does not arise from complexity. Computers look complex, but when you get down to it, the individual operations are very simple, much simpler than ordinary human reasoning. The computer is powerful because it does these operations without errors, and it's fast. In the 1960s, almost nobody had access to a real computer. You know, even students and professionals who wanted to learn programming didn't have any real machines to work with. So some people figure out ways to do it by hand, on paper. This is the second episode in a little series I'm doing about paper computers. These are kind of hard to come by, so let me know if you got any leads. Last time I talked about the know-how paper computer from 1983. That one was a lot simpler than this one for today, so you might want to go back and watch that video first. Today's paper computer is the Little Man Computer. The Little Man Computer was invented by MIT professor Stuart Madnick in 1965. In those days, real computers were almost totally inaccessible to ordinary people, even students at MIT. So Madnick came up with a way to learn and practice programming even without access to an actual machine. The idea is you learn the machine's language and you write programs just like you would on a real computer. But the whole thing is set up so that you can run your programs yourself on paper. So you're writing real computer programs and you can really test them out, but you yourself are the one simulating the machine. Obviously, this was done for practical reasons because the students didn't have access to real computers. But even now that computers are widespread, this is still a great way to learn this kind of low-level programming. You know, the process of doing it on paper is a really hands-on in a way that's hard to duplicate using an actual computer. Unfortunately, the history is a little murky on this one. Professor Madnick created the Little Man Computer as a teaching aid for his computer science courses, but he never wrote or published anything about it. That murky period ended in 1996 in a book called The Architecture of Computer Hardware and Software Systems by Irv Englander, another computer science professor. Irv got a lot of support from Madnick himself, and the book became so popular that this specific version of the Little Man computer has become something like the official version. I'm going to be basing my video on the little man computer described in the fifth edition of Englander's book, which was published in 2014. Here he is, the little man. The little man works in the mailroom, and there's 100 mailboxes numbered 00 to 99. Each mailbox has information in it in the form of a three-digit number. Those numbers, they could represent just some numerical data, or they could be interpreted as instructions for the little man. Every different number has a specific meaning for the little man to do. They have to learn what instruction each different number represents. Anyway, the little man also has an in-basket and an out-basket, and certain of the instructions will tell the man to pick something up from the in-basket or put something in the out-basket. And the other piece of this setup is a calculator that can do just simple addition and subtraction. The idea is the little man starts off at the first box, number 00, zero. He opens that up and follows whatever instruction is in there. Maybe this involves getting something from the inbox, using the calculator, whatever it says he does it. And then he goes on to the next box until uh, one of the instructions tells him to stop. So let's talk about the instructions. Remember I said each instruction is a three digit number. These numbers, they indicate specific operations that the little man can do. So here's the allowable operations in each step. This is called the instruction set. Every instruction is three digits. Usually the first digit tells you kind of what type of instruction it is, and then the second two digits refer to one of the mailboxes addresses. If the instruction begins with a five, this is a load instruction. The man looks at the number in box XX and types it into the calculator. So if the instruction was 542, that means the man looks at box 42 and types that number into the calculator. And whatever used to be in the calculator gets wiped out. If the instruction begins with a three, this is a store instruction, which is like the opposite of the load. The man looks at the calculator and puts that number into box XX, and whatever used to be in that box gets thrown away. If the instruction begins with a one, this is an add. The man takes the value from box XX and adds it into the calculator. With a two, this is the same as an add, but it subtracts instead. The little man's calculator can't handle negative numbers right, so if you get a negative answer, the calculator just jams and says it's negative. Uh, the little man can keep going in that case, but he can't really use the answer on the calculator except just to know that it's negative. 
The next three operations involve jumping from one box to another. If the first digit is a 6, this is the jump instruction. This tells the man to jump over to box XX and continue from there. First digit 7 is a jump if 0. For this one, the little man checks the calculator answer, and if it's 0, then he jumps. Otherwise, he just goes on to the next box as usual. First digit 8 is jump if positive. This time, the little man checks the calculator answer, and he jumps as long as it's not negative. That is, if it's a positive number or 0. Okay, you remember all those? Probably not. There's actually just three more simple ones. 901 is input. The specific code 901 tells the little man to get a number from the inbox and type it into the calculator. The number in the inbox gets thrown away in case there's more stuff in there. You can go back for the next one. 902 tells the man to take the current calculator answer and send it into the outbox. 000 tells the man to just stop the program. I'm not making this up. Englander really calls this the coffee break instruction. So that's the instruction set. Basically you got 10 different types of instructions and they're mostly determined by what the first digit is. Only 10 different instructions, but it turns out these 10 simple instructions are sufficient to simulate any calculation that a real computer can do. Because a real life computer, when you look closely enough, it just boils down to the same type of very simple operations. Englander doesn't give you specific instructions on how to do this on paper, so I made my own little printable little man computer. Of course, you could easily just draw a mock-up of this, or if you want, click on the link down there and you can print out mine. Since the man is constantly moving stuff around between the boxes, you're going to need to use an erasable pencil. So here's my 100 boxes, and I got room to write stuff in each one. On the right side is the inbox and the outbox, and I got my calculator here. When a box is blank, I'm going to interpret that as the number 000, which is the halt instruction. The little man's going to move from one box to the next, and as usual, I'm going to use my little golden ducky to represent the little man. Down here, I wrote out all the operation codes, because I can never remember them. All right, let's try to make a simple program that takes two numbers from the inbox, adds them together, and then puts the answer in the out box. So the main idea is to use the add instruction, which has first digit 1. But this has to add a number from one of the boxes into the calculator. So first got to get the first number from the inbox into one of the mailboxes. You could put it anywhere, but let's put it in box 30. This actually requires two steps. The input operation, 901, moves the number from the inbox to the calculator. And then I use the store operation, 330. This stores the calculator's number into box 30. Then we do another input to get the second number. That's a 901 again. And then I'm going to add the number from box 30 into the calculator. That's 130. Remember, digit 1 is for add. And the 30 means add the number from box 30. Now the calculator should have the answer in it. So I send it to the outbox, which is code 902, and then stop. All right, let's try it out. I'm going to put 423 and 150 in the inbox, and we should end up with 573 in the outbox. And in the spirit of the little man metaphor, I'm going to narrate for us. Okay, the little man starts in mailbox 00. He sees 901, which means the input, so he takes 423 out of the inbox, puts it in the calculator. Then the little man goes to mailbox 01, sees 330, which means store in box 30. So he copies from the calculator, 423 goes into box 30. Then we go to mailbox 2. He sees another 901, which means an input again. So I type 150 onto the calculator. And the next box has a 130, which means we add box 30 into the calculator. Next instruction is a 902, which means output the calculator answer. So 573 goes in the out box. And the next is the 000, which means halt, and it's over. Yeah, how about this one? I'm going to input two numbers and output whichever number's bigger. So first I'm going to input the two numbers and store them in box 30 and 31. At this point, the second number is still going to be on the calculator, so I'm going to subtract the first number from it with a 230. And now we can tell which number was bigger based on whether the subtraction was positive or negative. So I'm going to use instruction 8. That's the jump if positive. Let's say 820, so it'll jump to box 20 if the answer was positive. And if it's negative, it'll continue on just to box 6. And in the negative case, it means the second number was bigger, so I want to output the second number. So I load into the calculator with a 531, and then output with a 902, and halt. Now if that subtraction was positive, it would have jumped to box 20. And from there, we should output the first number. So it's a 530 to load the first number, then a 902 to output, and halt. 
I'm going to try testing it out twice, once where the first number is bigger, and then once where the second number is bigger. Looks like it worked. Just for fun, I wrote a program to input two numbers and multiply them. Here's the strategy. The two numbers get copied into boxes 30 and 31. And then we have like a running total in box 40 where we're going to add the first number over and over again. Box 31 is just going to count down to zero to make sure I'm adding the right number of times. It's a little tricky. Uh, you want to try some? As usual, I'm going to give you an easy, a medium, and a hard, and I'm going to put my answers in the YouTube description. Easy one. Pull four numbers from the inbox and then push them out to the outbox in the reverse order. Here's a medium one. The first number in the inbox is going to tell you how many numbers are going to follow it, and then I want you to add the rest of the numbers up. So if the inbox had something like 41783, the answer should be 1 plus 7 plus 8 plus 3. And here's a hard one. Division. Let's divide the first number in the inbox by the second, and you end up with some quotient and some remainder. Uh, I want you to push the quotient to the outbox, and then push the remainder to the outbox. The Little Man computer is a great model of low-level programming. It's very similar to certain types of assembly language. But beyond that, the metaphor of the Little Man is instructive, and I think part of Madnik's concept in describing the computer as a Little Man is to get at a certain philosophical idea about the nature of a computer. See, the little man has a very limited function in this machine. He goes to a box and does whatever it says in there. The little man only sees one box at a time. He has no concept of what the large scale of the program means or what goal he's trying to accomplish. He is simply looking at the boxes one at a time and doing what the boxes say. There's actually a great video game built around the basic framework of the little man called Human Resource Machine. See, there's the little man, and there's the inbox and the outbox, and you have to write code to make him accomplish specific tasks. The instruction set is even mostly the same. It's a great little game. It's really fun if you're into programming, and the scenes in between the levels really emphasize the bleak drudgery of the little man's work. He's just a cog in some incomprehensible corporate machine that's totally beyond his understanding. Why is he doing all this? What's the goal of it all? Is there any goal? For me personally, it makes me think about human beings. You know, just like the little man, the neurons inside of a human brain, individually, they operate without any understanding of their own or agency. But even without a little man in there, a human being is a transcendent and a beautiful thing of eternal value. You don't need a little man for that. And if a human soul can emerge from a bunch of individually soulless neurons, I have to believe that the same could happen inside a computer. And if it could happen in a real computer, it could even happen here, on paper. Probably pretty slow. <laughs>